welcome to Bring Back the Girls, and I'm so excited for this episode. I got to interview my best friend, Ange Napolitano. Uh, we talk about so much in this interview, from how she became a shooting star, how she transitioned from flying to basing. We also just discussed some fun memories that we've had uh, from the 2017 year. Uh, Ange and I only got to spend one year on stars, but it was one of my favorite years I've ever been on stars. So we talked a lot about that year and how magical 2017 was for the both of us. Um, yeah, it's such a great episode. I will get right to the video and I will see you at the end. Well, hello everyone. Welcome back. We have our next guest, Miss Anne. Hey y'all. <laughs> I love that you say y'all. Everyone makes fun of me at home now. I come back and I sound a little bit Southern and my whole family is like, who are you? Who's your Jersey accent? <laughs> yeah, I don't sound, I don't say sauce anymore. We'll get started with the interview now. <laughs> Tell me a little bit about your trilling journey, how you started and became a World Cup shooting star. So I think I was kind of made for cheerleading, I would like to say. My mom and her sisters, they grew up being athletes themselves or coaches. I had a bunch of cousins that cheered at some point. My little sister, Gia, she was, she went through World Cup. She was on Twinkles, Omni, Odyssey. So a lot of family dynamic in that. Yeah, I started in Pop Warner when I was six for our town. I eventually started cheering at a small gym in my hometown. Um, it literally was a seven minute drive. It was awesome. Um, my mom coached there. I cheered with my sister there. I crossed down from our senior level three team to our youth two team. And then eventually I just kind of grew out of it. We only went up to a level three and I was throwing doubles. So I went to World Cup and decided to make the switch. My first year I was 11, going to be 12. And I made sons and that's when we were medium senior. And so that was exciting to make world's team for the first time. Then I was on Omni for two years. I flew my first year. I based my second year. And then at the end of the 2016 season, I got invited to Shooting Stars, which is like still my favorite video to this day. It's like me running through the tunnel. Like I'll, I'll cry watching it all the time. So I was on Shooting Stars for 2017 when we won Worlds. 2018, we got silver. 2019, I was captain and we won Worlds again. And then once my all-star career was over, I cheered at Clemson University, where I just graduated in May with a degree in economics. I was on the all-girl team for all four years. I was captain my senior year, and I was a part of our first national championship team in 2021, which is pretty exciting. Basically, my whole cheer career. It's an incredible career. Yeah, so you were on the team with me in 2016 and no, 2017. Yeah, 17 oh, wow. and then, yeah. We well, half of 20, not even half. Like the yeah, a couple months in 2018, but yeah, 17, 18. But we'd been friends because oh yeah, Julia and Julia were on Twinkles together. And, and we always remember, hang out, yeah. I think our moms were like, Angie and Lauren are so similar. We should just have them hang out. And so mm -hmm. anytime there's like a Twinkles like thing or like Gia and Julia were hanging out, our moms just brought us and we ended up becoming really good friends. Oh, because awesome. I remember during the routine in 2016, looking at you day one, you were cheering me on for my two to double. Uh, yes, I, I remember did. being like, hey, Ange. I literally remember being, 2016 was the year of the wet floor. I remember being in like the baseball, screaming, thinking you could hear me like, ah, that's cool. <laughs> like she can't hear Actually, in, in spirit, yes. I, yeah. I heard yeah. I was fully convinced, but I know I lost my voice that day. And your, your mom, I remember she was a cheerleading coach. How was having your mom as a cheer coach? Because I know, you know, my mom wasn't a cheer coach and she had a lot to say. You know, now looking back on it, I am super grateful. She's, I will, I will give her all the credit. She's the reason I became so passionate about cheerleading. I would come home when we were younger and like be in the kitchen until, you know, 10 p.m. on a school night, helping her fix our dance. And even to this day, my Clemson coaches, they would reach out to her and be like, hey, like, what do you think about this? Like, we all call her Coach Ann still. She's very knowledgeable in cheerleading, gymnastics. She was also a gymnastics judge for 20 years. She has a lot of knowledge and wisdom. And I think when you're, you know, a teenage girl, it's hard having your mom as the person that's giving you these corrections. And, you know, even when I started at World Cup, she, she knows what she's talking about. She's going to have comments and she's going to tell me in the car. And I don't want to hear it as a 12 year old, but I am very grateful that I did have that experience. I think it made us closer. I think it was 
something I'll always cherish is like that time I got to spend with my mom because I do adore my mom. She is my role model and like being able to put the two together. It's just, it was, it was good now being an adult and being able to look back at it. I think in the moment driving home from World Cup, there might have been some shoes flying, some words flying, but you know, I'm very grateful for it. I feel like a lot of people have experienced the car rides home. <laughs> At least mine was 15 minutes. So most people had hours on end. I had hour drives. No, I think it makes you look at your pedigree. Like you have done incredible. So your mom and you have done an incredible job. We will now switch to our next question. So you mentioned (laughs) that you were a flyer when you first came to World Cup. Uh, So you flew on Suns and then you flew on Omni, but then you made that switch to basing. So my question is, made you decide to switch to basing? Because you, from when I, I remember watching you on Suns and Omni, you were such a beautiful flyer. You had great, like, (laughs) your facial expressions. I don't know if I'll be able to find a video, but like. I probably have some I could send you. Please do, because like everyone needs to see you were so expressive in the air. The way that you like carried yourself, I thought was incredible. Like I thought you were a beautiful flyer on Suns and Omni when you were <laughs> when you were up in the air. So when you came down from the air, I w- I was sad to see you come down. But just t- tell us your journey and how you came to that decision. Being 12 and 13 on a world's team as a flyer is a lot of pressure. You have a lot of maturing to do as a young athlete on a world's team period and I think a lot of the time the flyers get blamed when mistakes happen especially when you're a young athlete and impressionable you could take the blame not saying that I was always perfect but it happens a lot I think it was that was a lot of pressure for me and I don't think I was able to reach my full potential in flying based off of that and I think also after the 2015 season I was going to be a freshman in high school I hit a growth spurt which tends to happen to people. And I remember that it was in, like, they just kept bringing it up, like, would you want to base? And I was like, nope. And my mom was very, like, you should base. Like, my mom was fully on board. You should be a base. I remember talking to Sammy and Anthony about it for a while. I was like, nope, I want to fly. They're like, are you sure? I was like, yeah. So I went back to Omni for the first two weeks as a flyer again. And then I remember just one practice getting pulled into Miss P's office and Miss P and Sammy were there to tell me that they had already talked to my mom and I was basing. <laughs> and that's so intimidating to walk into. And like Miss P wasn't my coach yet. So I was like, oh no, what did I do? Like, you know, I cried a little bit. I was a little upset, but I think everything's meant to be and it happens for a reason. And I think it was the best thing for me. And also I think that was for me to reach my goal to be a shooting star because since I walked into World Cup, I wanted to be a shooting star. I remember my first day at World Cup, uh, Chrissy was there, Zach was there. And they just wanted to see me tumble and like show me around the gym. And Zach asked me what team I wanted to be on. I was 11. I said, shooting stars? I wasn't even age eligible for shooting stars. Like I barely had a double. But like that was the goal ultimately was to be a shooting star. You are there. You watch the hard work. You get to see what everything stands for with the sisterhood, the tradition, the opportunity to be coached by Miss P, Joelle, Parky. Bucky, Ty, everyone that works on shooting stars, you see that you want to be a part of that. That's ultimately the goal as a young athlete at World Cup. And so I knew that I would probably have a better chance at making the team as a base than I would a flyer. I don't think there was any flying spots opening. Because there's like Arden, Julia, Gov, me, Katie. Uh, Kira. Kira. <laughs> Andrea. Andrea. Diana. Eight. Nine. We had nine stone groups. I feel bad now. I'm going to do this. Andrea was here. Gub, Julia, Kira, Gianna, Arden, you, Katie, Sophia. Oh, okay, so yeah, there wasn't any any flying spots moving up to start. Back is what I was saying. <laughs> I ultimately, that was the goal. And so, you know, it was upsetting at first, but I think that's where I needed to be. And I could use my wisdom as a flyer because I know what it felt like and I knew what it was like to be in that position. And use it to be the best base that I could be and the best teammate I could be, whether it's my stunt group or not, being able to see both as a main base, a side base. I backspotted in college. I think that's just like something that I had in my back pocket was being able to do all the positions that like I could be of use to my other teammates and like my stunt groups and stuff. 
and it was cool because my first flyer was with my sister. So they did pull Gia up to Omni. Yeah. So that is so cute. That was the year I crossed down to Starbreak Supersonics because I was still junior age. And I did got, not know that. What? Yes, I got hurt on Starbrights with my sister. My sister's face got hurt. I was on Starbrights when they were junior restricted by. That was the first year of that division. I crossed down base Gia on Starbrights. And then I think she got pulled up to Omni and we switched the stun groups. I ended up basing Gia on Omni too, which is pretty cool. So Gia's first world, so I got to base her. That is so wholesome because I, I based Julia and she knocked me out of competition. So I mean, not the same idea, but <laughs> we are on a mini team. Less less high stakes than, than worlds. Well, there's like two things that I want to mention. I totally feel when you're 12 or 13 on a senior group, when I was on Stars, I had that same experience. I felt a lot sometimes was placed on me because I was so tiny and, you know, you know, it's not all you. In Providence. Yeah. I got off the mat and they were yelling at you and it was like, it definitely wasn't your fault. And like, you were crying, like upset. It's hard because at 12 and 13 your maturity level isn't up there yet either so it's like true about the dino nuggets and mac and cheese i'm gonna have for dinner when i go home it's a lot you have to grow up very quickly going to school and you're in eighth grade and you're talking to your friends about that kind of stuff and then you're at practice and you have to act like you have to be at the same mentality as a 16 17 18 year old it can be a lot and you don't realize like me and you, like, we're going through it at the same time, but, like, we were on different teams, so we don't really know it. We see what we see and hear what we hear from each other, but also, like, you're 12 and 13, you don't think it's not normal. It's just, it's a, it's a hard position to be in, and especially coming from a senior level three team in a small gym in my hometown to now one of the most renowned gyms in the country. It can be a lot, never change it for the world, because it did make me who I am today. When you transferred to being a base, I'm sure you handled it with better grace than some of our um, bases. That was like my thing, even in college. It's just like, use my knowledge to the best of my ability. Being able to be versatile is such a benefit to a team. And it's not because like, oh, I want to give myself the best chance to be on a team. It's more of like, I want to be the best teammate I can be. I'm going to learn how to backspot for a year for Clemson. And I'm going to learn how to main base on Omni. And then I learned how to side base on shooting stars. It just makes you the best athlete. And to be a well-rounded athlete is going to be the best thing for a team. If someone was kind of going through the same transition, they're being told that they need to learn how to start basing. Do you have any advice for that person? I would definitely not take it as a knock. You realize that your strength is somewhere else. I'm not going to say I'm the best side base, but I did know by the time you got to college, like know what I was doing and I felt very confident in it. That would have never happened if I didn't learn how to base when they told me, hey, like maybe we should consider this. You can always go back to flying in college. There's plenty of girls that I've cheered with that learned to base or back spot in all stars and then came to college and one of the best collegiate flyers there are. Like Andrea. Andrea, my do you know Maya Shikawa? She was my roommate in college. She was on Smile Ed. Yes, yeah. So Maya backspotted her last year on Smile Ed. Beautiful flyer at Clemson. It honestly, like you never know what's gonna happen and if you truly are passionate about cheerleading and care about it, you're gonna do what's best for the team, you're gonna do what's best for you. To enjoy the experience so I wouldn't take it as a knock and be just be open and willing to try and if it doesn't work you can always go back to flying if it doesn't work you could you know maybe base and fly at the same time I think when I first learned to base I flew in the pyramid and baskets on Omni I asked to be taken out of baskets because I thought I was gonna die but I hate it. baskets I love baskets I didn't know how to basket my first year either I front spotted on Suns I asked to be taken out of baskets my senior year. I went up to Parky. I was like, please stop. I remember that. <laughs> In baskets. Even though, like, looking back, my baskets were pretty good. Like, I don't know why. You were perfect at everything you did. <laughs> That's not true. That was me this past year. I was like, I don't want to jump. I do not want to jump. <laughs> All right. Well, that was good advice. Good little segment. And we'll move on to the next question. I never know how to transition these things. Thank God for editing. Because, like, you do. Just like the the slide with the glitter. <laughs> okay, well, I guess my first thing is, do you still follow cheer? And I also want to ask what you think about the role of social media, like how it differs from when we were cheering, like in the also world compared to now. I try to keep up as best I can. I think being involved in college cheerleading, I was able to like still have a foot in the door and like keep up with cheer and that kind of stuff. Not as much anymore if I know stars are competing I really only pay attention <laughs> otherwise like I don't really know like I'll wait like 
NCA weekend. I was like, okay, what t- time do these stars go on or like any of the World Cup team? And then obviously I like to watch the rest of Large Senior to see like how everyone's doing, but not not as much as I used to keep up. Going to the second question, I think social media, like anything else, if used correctly, can be beneficial. But there also are cons. I think in the beneficial side of things, I think like a small gym that people don't know about or a team that could help them in the long run. Like, oh, I just saw this video of this team in this gym. Oh, they're only 10 minutes from my house. That can help them in a business aspect. And I think that's any business nowadays. The small businesses you see on TikTok where like Mm -hmm. they're blowing up because their video went viral, their product went viral because so-and-so endorsed them. However, I do think that it is a negative in the sense of not only are athletes worrying about what the judges think, you know, what their coaches think of their performance. Now you're worried about, okay, well, what what does social media have to say? You're going to check to see what the cheer nons are posting right after your performance. Even if you hit clean, that someone's always going to have something to say. And I think that puts a lot more pressure on athletes and it kind of takes the love out of it for a lot of people because they're so worried about the negatives and I think a lot of people because of this and because it's so highlighted and social media is a big part of lives nowadays a lot of people are more worried about their image on social media versus just being the best athlete that they can be you know my senior year is when it started like cheering ons became a thing I think we did like a segment majors did like a film segment where they talked about like cheering ons and like all the mean tweets and stuff that is always something hard but I think even with social media being on the rise when we were athletes I think we just always the expectations of world cup and what we were taught I think we've always just been taught to like be courteous if people do come up to you and that kind of stuff and you know just handle it in classy manners and I don't think any of us really cared about that kind of stuff anyways. Like, I feel like it might have been more, like, prevalent at other gyms when it first started out. But I just don't think for us, like, we cared. Like, we just wanted to be at cheer because we love cheer. And shooting stars is truly, like, a sisterhood. Like, we wanted to be there with our friends and stuff. So, good job, World Cup, because it took, like, we all take it into our lives nowadays. You mentioned something, and it reminded me, when I was at NCA and Kelsey Rule fell I remember watching Joelle grab Kelsey Rule and like harshly say to her you need to go back to your hotel room right now go leave get out of here turn off your phone don't like look at anything and then Joelle god bless her soul she like took me to the corner and she goes Lauren the reason why I yelled at Kelsey is because people are ruthless online and Kelsey doesn't deserve that. Kelsey shouldn't see that. Yes, maybe yelling was not the best thing at the moment, but I think Joelle and Lane are so passionate and protective of us. And the fact that she did that for Kelsey and was just like, we need you to leave. We want you to get out of here. We don't want you to deal with all the... Could you imagine Kelsey Rule if she was cheering nowadays? I see some of the stuff these like athletes are going through and I feel awful for them because people forget that like we're growing up. We're kids too. Oh my God. I, I feel people forget that they're talking about teenagers. Like the yeah. things I would read about Kelsey sometimes or even myself, I'd be like, damn. <laughs> why it's insane we're at practice talking about oh this is what i'm like you guys want to come to my birthday party like stuff like that like we're kids we have lives like me and you are going to six flags tomorrow and people are tweeting <laughs> i just yeah, like our routine or just like how we didn't hit a stunt right the same thing is, like you don't know what someone's going through like that's why you shouldn't say anything everyone has something to say nowadays which is hard to deal with but honestly like when it comes to social media and that like it really shouldn't even matter. Like, put your head down, work hard, lead by example. That's kind of like, or I get upset with like people who try to promote themselves on social media. It's just like, it's not for the right reason. Any recognition, I think a lot of our teammates, if anyone has ever been recognized, like they work their butts off. And it's not like they did it to be recognized. They did it because they love cheerleading. They love World Cup. They love being a shooting star. And like, I think that was just such a great mentality that we all collectively have had was just like, we know how to like handle ourselves and like, we're not there for that. We're there to be the best that we can be and enjoy however many years you get to be on this team. And I think Elaine and Joel sets a culture up to be that. And I think a lot of people talk about this when they graduate and they're no longer a shooting star is that like, 
the lessons you learned from them, what you learned from World Cup, Miss P and Joelle, you do carry on in your life. It's more about the experience of being a shooting star. I could have never won Worlds. We could have never won a single competition in my three years on the team. And I would still be grateful for that experience because of what I was able to take out of it beyond the cheerleading. A lot of people that were shooting stars have the same experience and that's why we're all so close. The one year they were posting about the alumni house at Worlds that we're all gonna go and like stay in it on Twitter. I remember that, yeah. Oh yes, the little fashion show we can always go to. I want to go when I'm home, but I don't. Never home. I'm never in New Jersey in the middle of winter, like when they held it. If I didn't work a nine to five, I'd totally. Yeah, work. right. Someone give us tickets. I'm going to stop. Someone give me a plane ticket over there. <laughs> a little carpool there. <laughs> Anyways, we'll move to the next question. because. <laughs> and recording back on. No, I'm just going to do one of these every time. Stop. Yeah, <laughs> 22 wearing my world ring still. I don't even know where mine are. I think they're just in my house. And my hand feels naked without them, but I did tell my my dad asked me when I'd stop wearing them, and I told him when I get engaged. He said, "Really?" I said, "Probably not, but probably not. It will be with your engagement ring." That and would kind of be iconic, though. Your I'm engagement like... ring with the world ring. Do you have any cheerleading superstitions that you ever done? I wasn't like superstitious. But I knew that, like, for me to be the best that I could be, I needed to eat a banana before competing. I remember that! They're supposed to help your legs, I'm pretty sure. So I always had a pixie stick and a banana because I didn't want to eat before we went because I wanted to, like, feel lighter when I was yeah. And I carried it through college. And then in college, not that I, like, became superstitious, but it was, like, sentimental. You know the songs we would sing before shooting stars? Yes, yeah by myself in my like apartment what are the songs again it's like how did you get here nobody's supposed to be here yes for yeah. three. stronger and then what's the Nicki minaj song i fly with the stars in the sky the name of moment band. for life that's like the most important one but yeah and i wore our evil eyes when i competed in daytona. yes arden would give them out yeah so we would have those evil eyes i wore them in daytona on my sports bra the same sports bra that i i guess it is superstitious but i think it was just like routine for me more so <laughs> i had the same sports bra that I had worn since I was on Shooting Stars. Yeah, I definitely, I always had a banana, a pixie stick, and then my sports bra and our evil eyes and those songs. But yeah, until- Remember my- your banana, I do. This is so gross. And I don't want anyone to judge me, but I had the same, I had a sports bra that I wore since Twinkles and it wasn't washed and I would only wear it for competition. I, I remember that. <laughs> so it was so gross looking it was not good we don't talk about that well I guess I just did but but it's not like, but that's why I won okay well that, that's why you won that's the only reason you won sports bra. not because you're gonna cheer your team did good like it was just the sports bra scratch off like a lottery ticket with it on and if you win then you know it's the sports bra <laughs> that was so gross when I went home because we're moving and stuff I found it and I was like <laughs> What is this? <laughs> Rip it. Fabric is coming off. But remember the sport who when you were on the team, who had that sports bra? And is it washed? That better be washed. They should wash that sports bra. I thought you had it at one point. No, I only was passed down the wave. O- only. The wave is like a really big <laughs> And then I passed it down to Sophia when I left. Stop, gave it a gub. Gub give it to Andrea. Andrea gave it to I don't know who had it up. Yeah, but who got the sport? I know Macy had the sports bra. I know Macy had the sports bra. Your little sister, whoever that was. Because sometimes they just give them to the little sister. I know that that's what I did for uh, Who's Bad Michael Jackson because it was. Oh, oh that's bad. And I had tumbling. I was the tum- I started tumbling. Cassidy Ocean. Oh, so I always had tumbling. And my favorite was so the next two years, no one, so your first practice, no one really knows that. Someone will like go ahead of me and Kenny has to like explain. Ange is always going to be the first one to go and then everyone else can start. I had yeah, the traditions are we. I forgot about some of them. Yeah, I had Who's Bad, the tumbling. And then packing You got a lot of stuff fast. Look at you. Slowly. I would love to know who has it all now, like on the team. That's that's good to ask Kennedy. I'll ask her. I'll be like, tell me. I know she has the wave because I've seen like little videos of her doing it. So she has the wave. That's all I know. I wonder who has five, six, seven, eight or music. Oh, um, music song. Well, I do. never wanted that one. I never wanted the music song. I did that at Clemson this past year. I did that absolutely last. not because at the beginning of the routine, I'm trying to like focus. <laughs> I don't need to be yelling. <laughs> I don't need to be yelling. No, because you have to like scream it. That's why I'm so glad that I was in college cheer after like stopping and doing a cheer in the routine or like before the routine or 
I think NCA is the 45 second cheer. You do a 45 second cheer and then you start your routine. I'm so glad that I like was in the era right after that. So I never had to do it. That is very nice. Yeah, I always was holding when we went to the shooting star banquet and that like had to be passed down. I'm like, no, no one give that to me. Please, God, no one give that to me. And the music. I'm pretty sure God, like, that played the music. I could see Gub doing that. I don't remember any of it. it. I just remembered what I had as we were talking about it. I only remember like the the sports bra, the wave, and then the ones that you're saying. Hmm. Yeah, I would. I need to know where yeah. who knows what and what they are because we we are definitely missing some, but it's fine. You should make a list. I will. At least like in our timeline of like who it started with and like who it ended with. Okay, we'll figure it out. I'll okay. I'll get. I'll get on that. <laughs> I can help you. I got free time. Uh, since Worlds is coming up, I don't know if you've seen any of the routines. I've seen two, no, three routines. I've seen Orange, Panthers, and Stars. Honestly, I think the top two for me I like is Panthers or Stars. I like Panthers. I think they're very, like, in your face this year. But yeah, I mean, obviously I'm biased towards Stars. It could be their worst day, and I'm like, they're winning. They won it all. They're all the best. stunts are on the ground, but they, they deserve it. <laughs> Shooting Stars could mark their routine, and I'd be like, they're the best in the world. What, what can I do? <laughs> we'll, we'll see what happens. I don't really follow it too much, but now since I started this, maybe I will. Yeah, you can have a world viewing party, like a whole Zoom of everyone. We're all just like watching. We're all just watching. That could be fun. I don't know how we would do that, but I'd be down to try. I do miss worlds. Like I I miss competing, but I do miss going there. Like the whole experience of like meeting everyone. Worlds is always, I think what stings is like, worlds is like the best competition and it's the last one. And I think not a lot of people understand it, that like it's the most it's probably one of the most high pressure it is the most high pressure competition but it's the absolute best like that is my favorite competition like it's honestly not scary and I think it's just because it's like this is your last chance like put it all out there which is like why it's not scary but also I feel like energy yeah like you want to see your like your favorite teams you run to different places always chaotic but it's always fun like you're in Disney you're in Florida Mm -hmm. I was, my senior year, I had that USASF scholarship. It was large senior went on. And then right after that was scholarship, like presentation and then large senior awards. So as soon as I got off the mat, I think Bucky ran back there with me. We ran back to wherever I needed to be for my scholarship. And then we came out in the middle of large senior as they're going, I don't like to watch the teams we compete against. No, I never did. Like I, I was always told by my coaches, just don't watch it. There's no need. Yeah. I think that's a superstition of mine. In 2017 and 2019, I didn't watch any other team we competed against. We won. Ever, when I was on stars, never knew what the other teams looked like ever. Is Not that, that what you- Because it's fantastic cheerleading, that division. I just. Yeah. I never watched it. Like people would tell me that Panthers look incredible this year. I'm like, I've never seen them. <laughs> I don't know what they they look like. Yeah, that's the the funniest part is like, you know, the most popular teams are all in that division and you don't know what they look like half the time because you're either one in warmups. You just went on and I feel like me and you were more concerned about dipping dots after than like, (laughs) like people would stay in the arena like as soon as we were done, like run in and like try to go see like the next team and I'd be like, I need some chicken fingers. And then like, what time does TGLC go on? Like, I just- Yes, you always had to know what TGLC went on. I love the day after you win Worlds because, and teams are still competing because you go with your Worlds medal and you go watch other teams. It's so nice. That was a good day because my little Gia competed. I remember we went to go watch. We were sitting on the side, right? I was like screaming, crying. I was like, come on, Gia. And then she came off the mat like crying because she did so good. It was so cute. Oh, and then after we won Worlds, I have a video of you because we had the banner in our room. Oh no. Recreated uh, when you were on Twinkles Chasing Perfection when you're like, I slept with the jacket. I didn't want my parents taking it. And it's like, you say that and then I pan and like the banner that says like 2017 World Champion is on the bed next to us. I thought my mom and dad would make fun of me by taking the jacket and hiding it. So I slept with it. Why did we have that banner? Who gave us the banner? Yeah. Out of all the rooms on that team, they gave it to us? It was me, you, JC, and Mika in a room. Yeah, too. what the heck? <laughs> I don't know if we ended up with it permanently, but we had it. I have the video. Okay, last question. 
I need to know your favorite all-star routine of all time and your favorite shooting star routine of all time. I'm going to be biased. Okay. That's okay. <laughs> shooting stars. All-time favorite. I will cry watching it. That's something else I will cry watching. <laughs> it's just like, I don't think people understand all that was behind that. And I think Julia talked a lot about it, that we all like simultaneously just like knew we were going to win Worlds. Why? Because we, we had not won a competition all year. Like, I mean, Julia in 2017. Stunt group was perfect. Did you know we never fell in a full out or a competition and no one knew that? No, I didn't know that. Yeah, well, do you remember that one practice? We were, it was 2017. And they were giving like each stunt group like an award, like a super. Yes, I do remember that. Yeah. Anything about our stunt group. Like <laughs> no one had anything to say about our group. And so we were like, guys, we're literally the only group to hit at every single practice and competition. Like we were very offended. That is but so we were, like, funny. In our own little world, it was like me, Cassidy, Natalie, and Julie. Oh, I love Cassidy Osher as my base because she was my base on Starlights. Yeah, I loved Cassidy. I love basing with her. That was a good group. That's like one of my favorite song groups. We were a phenomenal team. Atmosphere of our team was so great. Like we were all genuinely friends. For 38 girls to be best friends, it's very hard to do. And for some reason, I think everyone had the same experience where they were just like, yeah, we're going to win worlds. And like, I think there was really no pressure. We were kind of just like, well, at this point, might as well have fun. <laughs> because we don't need enough to lose. Exactly. I think that was literally before we competed, someone in the circle was just like, we haven't won all year. And this is like, oh, this is our time. That was like 2019. We were more worried about, we were like, yes, we got something for the pillowcase. Yes. <laughs> People who don't know, you get a pillowcase at the end of each year and it says every like competition that you won. And the one for 2017 and I assume 2019 too. It was just world champion nothing else i think 2017 we had we won in ohio because we won against our oh team. you're right we have like one random one on 2017 2019 literally just says 2019 world champions <laughs> and like world cup shooting stars it was such a fun year oh, the beginning little rough but definitely all the hard work it was worth it it was it was a good first year to be a shooting star for me like i feel like magical it was like my Disney World. And like, even when we didn't do so great, I always felt the team was able to get it back together and try and get better each practice. You know, we wouldn't do so great at a competition, but I don't know if you've talked about this on here, but like how we stayed together all the time and flew together. Like we were always with each other. We'd be oh, like, yeah. no, we would stay together for like competitions. You always roomed as shooting stars. Like we would do different things like basket groups or like big sister, little sister, stunt groups. There was like other random ones, like last names, maybe classes too. Like, put it up randomly because there's so many competitions that we're staying at a hotel for. Mm -hmm. And then Blue as a team. So, like, you don't really see your parents unless they like come to your room or like they want to meet you before you compete. But we would sometimes have to get party buses from the airport. <laughs> Caught about that. Yeah. Hotel or like from the hotel to the airport. And I'm pretty sure, was it Ohio? We had like a rough weekend. It was the last competition before Worlds. And like, we were all kind of just like bummed out. But like the next morning we're on the party bus, like singing Hannah Montana, <laughs> yeah. dancing. We got the lights going. It's the little things like that, that like I'm going to cherish. So I, I assume then it's your favorite stars routine of all time as well. Obviously Fashionista, the Lola year with the flowers in there. Oh yes, 2010. And yes, I love 2010. I think if like, 2017 never happened or like this was taking place in like 2016 or like before we had our 2017 routine I'd say those those are good ones I love those I, yeah. I didn't know it was Jamie Parrish because Kira and I were talking about it it was uh, Jamie Parrish she called me after she was like who was it I'm like oh yeah you're the one that told her <laughs> I talk to Kira every day like mm -hmm. I FaceTime her like 20 times a day I love that I love Kira I need to talk to her more but we're on book reads together so I always see what she's reading <laughs> all right well those are my questions but thank you so much for coming on and i will stop this recording really quick all right so that was it i hope you enjoyed the video i'm so excited for the girls that i have lined up for you guys and i i think you guys will enjoy them too present stars coming in maybe maybe who knows i'm having a blast making these videos and talking to 
old friends and reaching out to people that I haven't spoken to in years. So I'm really enjoying this and I'm glad some of you are enjoying it as well. Please like, comment, subscribe, follow me on Twitter, Instagram, bring back the girls and suggest any anything in the comments if you want to see some stars or have any different ideas for content that I can post throughout the week. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoy it and I'll see you hopefully this, this Sunday.